Shut up and sit down. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Mr. Sensible here. Today I'm very fortunate to have a guy, a flat earth guy, by the name of Glenn Hall. So Glenn, how long have you been into flat earth? It's now been over three years since I have believed that the earth is flat. And like everyone else, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a joke. I really did. Well, Glenn, I think that pretty much the rest of the world thinks it's a joke. They really do. Um, okay, so what are you going to give us today? Well, today I'm going to give you my top 10 reasons why I believe the Earth is flat. Well, that's fantastic. And what do you base this on? What I've looked into for the last three plus years. And it's based upon reason. It's based upon simply thinking through the issues, thinking through things that we're told. So not looking at evidence then? Looking at pictures of things. Pictures of things. Pictures of the earth as it is. Pictures of the earth as people want us to believe it is, like the pictures from NASA. Oh, cool. Job done then. No flat earth. Pictures of the moon landing, which are obviously fake. It was obviously a fake job. And if you've not come to that conclusion yet, you need to look at you need to look at the evidence better. Glenn, I've got a feeling that it might be you that needs to look at the evidence a bit better. Still, I understand you're here today with your top ten proofs. So or top ten best reasons to believe in a flat earth. So, why don't you go ahead? The first, first reason is, is very simple. There has never been one scientific test or experiment that has proved that the Earth moves. They've tried, people have done various experiments and have tried to prove that the Earth moves, but they can't. Well, how about this, um, Glenn? This is a Foucault um, pendulum at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. And as the Earth rotates, so the path of the pendulum uh, appears to have rotated um, slightly round with every single um, swing of the pendulum and over 24 hours it will have made a full rotation. Let's just um, look at speeding this up a bit. So here we are at 8 speed and I'll speed up further to 16 in a moment. As it uh, swings, each swing has rotated around a fraction more. Hard to see with the naked eye which is why we've got those pegs. If we slow down again we'll see that the earth has actually rotated enough Bosh, to knock the next peg over. Job done, Earth moves. Well, the second reason really is a very good reason, a very profound reason. And that is that science's explanation of the supposed four different movements of the Earth is ludicrous. Now, I had to write these things down so that I would get these facts correct. Earth supposedly spins on its axis eastward a full rotation every day, and that's how we get day and night. Okay, If that's true, then the Earth is spinning at the equator at the speed of 1,000 miles per hour. Second, scientists say that the Earth moves around the sun in a nearly circular orbit at the rate of 67,000 miles per hour. The third, our solar system 
the sun, the earth, and the planets, Venus, Mars, etc., whirl around the center of our galaxy at 490,000 miles per hour. Scientists speculate that our galaxy is hurtling toward the great attractor, the great attractor. It's a region in space roughly 150 million light years away from us. And how fast is it going? 2,227,273 miles per hour. Well, that's my second reason why I believe that we live on a flat Earth, because there's no way. There's no way that the Earth is moving in four directions at speeds that boggle the mind, speeds that we can't even comprehend. Oh, Glenn, 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 Glenn. The fact that you can't comprehend something or that your mind is boggled does not mean it's not true. If you're sat in a car driving at 100 miles an hour, you're not going to feel it. If you start zipping side to side so that you get thrown about, you'll feel that. But when you're going along straight without a change of uh, speed, you won't feel it. If you're on a plane, do you feel you're traveling at 350 miles an hour or whatever it is? No, you just get some buffeting. If you're on an electric, electric train, that's really smooth. You can barely notice you're moving. You have to look out the window sometime. Apart from the noise, you have to look out the window to tell how fast you're going. You don't feel speed. You feel changes in speed, changes in um, acceleration. Um, yeah, we're rotating. We're rotating very fast, but you're rotating at the same speed as the planet. You're moving at the same speed as the planet is around the sun. There's, there's no reason for you to feel it at all. And the fact that you can't comprehend that, again, doesn't mean it's not happening. My third reason why I believe that we live on a flat Earth is that there is a fixed order of the stars, the sun, and the moon. A fixed order. Men have relied upon the exact location of stars, sun, and moon for thousands of years in order to be able to navigate across land and sea. Now there's no logical or reasonable way for us to even explain how could these stars stay in the same order for thousands of years? How could we have the constellations, Orion, and all the others that are out there? How could we have these constellations perfectly, perfectly aligned forever, as far as the memory of man is concerned, if the Earth was hurtling through space in four different directions at crazy speeds. Glenn, the stars are moving. They can be measured in their movement. Now, if some are coming directly towards you or directly away from you, and so their light is shifted due to the Doppler effect, either red or blue. But I guess that's not um, something perhaps that you might accept. Well, what about photographs? The stars that are moving across, the ones that have a pro what's called a proper motion, you can take images of them year after year, and you can see how much they've moved. Now, it is only a tiny amount. The star that moves the fastest is our second closest star, Barnard's star, which is about 60 light years away. And roughly over your lifetime, it will have moved about half the width of the moon. That's all, just due to the great, great distances. 
Here are several images of a star moving against the background. And yet another showing dates and times the various images were overlaid. And then if we have a look at Barnard's star, every five years photograph, you can see how it's moved against the background. Now the position of the stars is changing all the time. Um, but if you were using them for navigation, they should be good for several thousand years before they've moved um, noticeably to the point that they're no longer of use to you, at which point you'll have chosen different stars. Fourth reason that I believe in a flat Earth is that there is no Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect states that you have to make adjustments with things for the movement of the to adjust for the movement of the earth so for example the earth is supposedly moving to the east at about a thousand miles per hour and so if you have an airplane that's flying and that airplane has to land on a runway that's running from south to north and it's coming in from the south the Coriolis effect would say that that airplane has to be moving a little bit to the east in order to just hit that runway right. Because remember, it can't go straight because the Earth is moving so fast. It's got to adjust for the Coriolis effect. Everything is relative. The Coriolis effect does have an effect on planes, but it's so minor that the, the constant course corrections for buffeting and wind and so on they're much larger than the, the effect of Coriolis. So just aiming for the runway and making these little adjustments up, down, left, right is more than enough to compensate for any Corio Coriolis effect. You keep going on about this thousand miles an hour, but remember the Earth's going at a thousand, the air's going at a thousand, your aeroplane in the air is going at a thousand as well. So the net difference between them is zero. Just like if you're going on um, a motorway, a freeway, and there's a car next to you in the, the next lane, they're, both, they're, they're doing the same speed as you, 75 each. You look across straight into the eyes of um, a passenger of that other car, it looks like you're not moving because you're both going along at the same speed. And it's the same with the plane and the earth, the air and the earth. Men shooting rifles, they say, have to adjust for the Coriolis effect. Men shooting missiles over in Europe during the war have to adjust for the Coriolis effect. No, they don't. Nobody does. Nobody did. Nobody ever did. With shooting a rifle at an ordinary sort of distance, the Coriolis effect is not really going to make any difference. Things will be... A fraction out and it's not gonna make any difference with something like a tank shooting a longer distance the missile would veer off course a fraction but since you've got a bloody big bang it again it's not gonna make any difference where it is really gonna make a difference is with something like a sniper um, and with a sniper at extreme distance um, if that a uh, bullet doesn't strike where it's going to strike, then you've missed. Um, so you absolutely have to take into account Coriolis. Um, if you're pointing east and west, the bullet's going to drop further or not so far. North and south, it's going to veer to the left or right. So absolutely, that's got to be taken into account. Sorry, but you're wrong. When people learn to fly airplanes, the first thing they learn is assume that you're flying over a flat earth. Assume that you're flying over a non-moving flat plane. Of course not. To all intents and purposes, you could imagine it being a flat plane because as you're flying along and you're making constant course corrections, that overcomes any Coriolis. Um, you're traveling in the air, which is rotating with the earth. There, there is nothing to take into account. So it makes no difference whether you consider the Earth 
um, round or flat when you're flying a plane it's exactly the same so why worry about it number five the fifth reason I believe in the flat earth is that airplanes you know they fly level right if they were flying over a sphere they would constantly have to be dipping their nose down in order to stay with the contour of the earth because if they didn't they would shoot up into space ultimately and they would be so far away from the earth they might not be able to breathe but pilots never adjust their noses pilots level they fly level they have instruments on board gyroscope that keeps them level they don't tip the nose down in order to stay with the contour of the earth Glenn I don't know if you have any idea of gravity and the scale of the earth and pressure and basically the way the real world works an aeroplane stays in the air by balancing the amount of thrust against drag and the lift against gravity um, until it reaches a balance. If it's got that balance, it stays at a height. If you increase the thrust and the lift, it will go higher. If you decrease it or and drag starts to overcome you, you'll go down. So a pilot just tries to balance it to keep his plane at, say, a thousand feet, which is going to follow the curve of the Earth. Although, having said that, over, say, a three-hour flight, the curve of the Earth is not going to be that many degrees. You don't have to worry about it. If you keep up a thousand feet from the surface of the Earth, you're a thousand feet from the surface of the Earth, whatever direction it's going. Um, that's a pretty weak argument. And the whole idea about just flying off into space, well, if that was possible, don't you think NASA would have done it? Hmm? Then the sixth reason I believe in a flat earth, and it's so simple, use your mind, use your logic. The sixth reason, there could be no independent wind currents on the earth if the earth were moving through space in four different directions at mind-boggling speeds. You'd never feel that cool breeze on a summer day. I really don't get that. That's just a bold assertion. Um, if we're moving around the sun at 66, 67,000 miles an hour, how would that affect how the wind blows on Earth? What affects the way the wind blows is high pressure and low pressure um, caused by temperature and so on. Um, it's got nothing to do with moving through space at whatever speed. Um, after all, if there's nothing in space, how is it going to affect us? Hmm? My seventh reason for believing in the flat earth is that water surfaces are always level, never curved. Water is always level. Why do they call it sea level? There would be no sea level if the earth were curved because the sea would always be at a different level. Sea level is sea level. It's at a particular place where everything from there is considered to be up or down. Sea level is a convenient measure to give us the same height, same distance from the center of the earth over the whole world. It's not a horizontal line with a curve of the earth like that. It's the distance from the center of the earth. It's the same, like, like a, an orange skin. 
the, the, the thickness of the skin, the top of the skin, it would be the sea level all the way round. Even if you had a mountainous bit of something stuck out the side of the orange land, um, it's not difficult. Um, yeah, everything above that surface is above sea level. Everything below that surface is below sea level. I mean, come on, this is not rocket science. And when you see water, it's always level. If you see a large body of water, it's always level. You never see a curve on the water. No matter how far out you're looking, you never see a curve on the water. Well, you're not going to see a curve across a glass of water or across a swimming pool or a lake or a bloody big lake. You're going to need to be looking out across, I don't know, the ocean. And you do see a curve. The curve isn't going to be like that. It's going to be away from you. Um, and that's when you see ships disappearing over the horizon. That's why... When you see tall structures or mountains in the distance, the bottom of them's cut off because they've gone behind the curve. Crying out loud. Have, have I broken you? Come on, Glenn. Cheer up, man. Come on, give some more. My eighth reason. There is no observable curvature over either water or land. The further you are away from it, the further down it should be. The ninth reason is using legit logic, I'm sorry, logic based upon these things that we see in nature. Logic says this. First of all, the logical proposition, and I did a whole video on this, you can look it up and find it if you want to, but logically, it's curvature on the earth. Okay? Now there is a logical theorem, logical truth. I have completed entire courses in logic, by the way. This is called the contrapositive statement. The contrapositive is this. If there is no curvature, now you can go to many places and find different logical proofs. I'm tempted to give you some here, but there's no reason to waste many people's time with that. So, if there is no curvature, then the Earth cannot be a sphere. No shit, Sherlock. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. And finally, last but not least, in fact, in my opinion, this moved to the greatest ideas except for maybe the second one with those four different movements oh good man you say the best to last can't wait can't wait let's knock their socks off all scripture references to the earth say that the earth is fixed and cannot be moved glenn you've gone and let us all down now You've given us the first nine gish gallop points of assorted shite. And now, what do you give us? You give us 2,000-year-old stories and poems and wobbly prophecy. 
and try and use that as the best reason to believe in a flat earth. Why don't you try and write it down and submit it as an entry for a Nobel Prize? <sighs> Glenn, I can't believe you've just done that. Shut up and sit down.